What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video, and make sure you leave a comment. Today, we're going to talk about what it's like to be imprisoned in a different kind of prison, not just the types of prisons that myself and my guests have been in. I'm talking about being in prison in your own house. And today, I'm going to say some things that I likely won't say ever again. And that's because of the case. This thing had popped up on my screen the other day. And I said, you know what? I remember watching that on the news on Good Morning America when I was sitting in prison. I remember this story. But I didn't remember all the particulars, so I started to read. And as I read, I said, wow, this is absolutely crazy. And this story is about two parents, David and Louise. Yeah, it's not Thelma and Louise. This is David and Louise. And their little house of horrors and the way that they treated their kids. And I thought to myself, you know, a lot of times we talk about saving kids from life imprisonment and premature death in the streets. And a lot of that has to do with the parents. I'm sure you've heard me numerous times say, be real men, real fathers, real leaders. And that's some of the stuff that myself and Cedric Dean taught people while we were in prison. We wanted these brothers to leave prison and be real fathers, man. To walk out in the street and stop the vicious cycle of poverty in prison, drug dealing, and pretty much just doing the wrong thing, right? And as I'm reading this story, I'm like, animals don't abandon their kids. How could a parent do this to their kids, the things that these people did? They lived in filth. It's grotesque. Absolutely shocking to see some of these pictures as I scrolled through my phone. And I just want to read some of this, and then we're going to talk about their sentences. 25 the life they got. And like I said, very seldom will you ever hear me say, that I think anybody deserves 25 years to life in prison. I think 95% of the people that commit crimes are redeemable. But after I read what these people did to their kids, I have to say, man, 25 years? I don't know. Just, I don't know. I want you to comment. I want you to tell me what you think. Do you think these people deserve 25 years? So let me read a little bit of this. And I want you to think about what it would be like to live in a house where you're chained to a bed as a child, beaten, kicked starved, allowed to smell pies and cookies sitting on the stove and you're starving and you're not allowed to eat any of it. Can you imagine what that's like for an eight-year-old kid, a nine-year-old kid? Hell, a 15-year-old teenager. Starved and beaten and chained for months at a time. Those are just some of the abuses endured by the children of the Turpin family. The only word I know to call it is hell, said Jennifer Turpin, reflecting on the trauma of her childhood. Should anybody ever have to refer to their childhood that way? My whole body was shaking. I couldn't really dial 911 because, Jordan said through tears, recalling the day of her escape and why she felt she had to make an attempt to run to safety. I think it was us coming so close to death so many times. If something happened to me, at least I died trying. The Turban Daughters described brutal violence and being deprived of food, sleep, hygiene, education, and health care for years. This girl's on the phone. And the 911 operator says, well, how long has it been since you've taken a bath? And she said, oh, about a year. They're allowed to take a bath once a year. Could you imagine what their skin felt like? Could you imagine your mother saying, you can't take a bath for a year? Murder, she choked me, Jordan said, and I thought I was going to die. In February 2019, David and Louise Turpin pled guilty to 14 felony counts, including torture false imprisonment, and child cruelty. The parents were sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. My parents took my whole life from me, but now I'm taking it back, Jennifer Turpin said at her parents' sentencing hearing. Wow. What did the district attorney say, Mike Hestron? He said the case stopped him dead in his tracks. Wow, can you imagine that? Can you imagine not taking a bath for a year, being chained to a bed? Nearly four years after their dramatic escape and rescue, the Turpin sisters said they are ready to move on with their life and reshape their public image. I want the Turpin name to be like, wow, they're strong. They're not broken. They've got this, said Jennifer. Not broken. Do you think they'll always be broken? Honestly, I have to say that enduring the torture, and this, this is torture. This is torture. How do you not? Consider yourself broken. How about the parents? You know, I watched the parents when they got sentenced, they were crying. 
<laughs> they're there crying. And I'm like, are you crying because now you're going to feel what you did to your kids? You're going to be locked in a cage just like they were for years, many, many years. But you know the difference between what they're going to endure in prison and what their children endure? They're going to get three meals a day. They're going to be able to shower when they want. They're going to be able to go outside and walk and get some air. They're going to be able to do all those things, all the things that their children weren't able to do. You know, when law enforcement went into the house, when the cops go in there, they find kids from the age of 2 to 29. Chad, why did you say a kid at 29? Because these kids never grew up. They grew up physically, but they never grew up mentally. Do you remember I said that in some videos? Sometimes a lot of prisoners grow up physically, but they never grow up mentally. Their mind is stopped at the point or at the age they were when they went to prison. And it's the truth. I've experienced it myself. Sometimes I still felt like I was 24, although I was growing. Sometimes your mental is stagnated when you're locked in like that. So that's why I say at 29, you hear the little girl calling the police and she's talking to them and she sounds like a seven-year-old little girl trying to explain what's going on. It's horrible. It's disgusting. When authorities entered the house, they found the children ages 2 to 29 being held in dark and foul-smelling surroundings. Some were bound to their beds and furniture by chains and padlocks, and many of the children told the police they were starving, according to the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. I love both of my parents so much, a statement read in court from another daughter said. God looks at the heart, and I know he sees theirs. I prayed often for them. Wow. Wow. Is that mercy? Is that compassion for what your parents did to you? Or, the, she, or was she just so disturbed, so mentally beaten by her parents that she could still have compassion? Or is it really compassion in her heart? I don't know how you have compassion for people that do those things. Was it simply because it was her parents? And then the mother, when she gets sentenced to 25 to life, she wants to apologize to the kids. All these years that these things went on, she never stepped up to the plate. She never did the right thing. Never. She read in a statement, I'm sorry for everything I've done to hurt my children. I love my children so much, she said. I want them to know that mom and dad are going to be okay. <laughs> mom and dad are going to be okay. Like I just said, yeah, they're going to be okay. Why? Because they still get three meals a day. Because they can shower every day in prison. Because they can walk out and get fresh air. They have people that they can talk to, that they can communicate with. Prison sucks, right? But the prison that their kids were in was 10 times worse than the prison that she's going to be in or the prison that she is in and the prison that she's been in. I never intended for any harm to come to my children. I hope the very best for my children in the future. <laughs> I don't know how you could make a statement like that. I love my children. Well, you didn't show it through your actions. You didn't do the things that a mother is supposed to do. Instead, you crushed your kids. You crushed them. You took away their lives, the best years of their lives, their adolescent years when they're supposed to be outside riding bikes. And yeah, they didn't get to go outside. Once in a while, they went on a little trip, made it look good. Maybe that's when they got to take a bath, just before they went out on a vacation to Disney World. Prosecutors said the Turpin children were giving only one ration meal a day and allowed to shower once a year. Their parents would bake pies and not let their hungry children eat them. They would buy toys, but forbid the children from opening or playing with them. Why would you buy toys and wrap them up and taunt your kids? You're taunting your children. They're starving. They're eating one meal a day, rationed meal a day, and get your baking pies and won't let them have any. You won't let them eat. The children were forced to spend most of their time in the house. Neighbors told NBC Los Angeles last year that they knew the couple had a lot of children but weren't sure how many because the kids didn't come out very often. There were times the family was all out together, like on trips to Las Vegas when the Turpins renewed their vows. Videos showed the girls in pink dresses, white tights, and heels. The boys wore dark suits with white shirts and red ties. <laughs> so the parents are renewing their vows. And then the kids get to go on a little trip with them, renewing their vows. Perhaps they should act like parents. Perhaps the father should have stepped up and been a real father, a real leader. Or perhaps the mother should have done what she was supposed to do as a mother, and that is nourish her children, mold them, help them grow, give them love, give them compassion. They got none of it. 
Louise Turpin's sister, Teresa Robinette, said during an interview that the family gave the impression that they were living the perfect life. Living the perfect life. Where the hell was the family at at Christmas time? Didn't they go there and see the kids were malnourished? See that they looked like they were skinny and starving? Some of these kids were in bad shape when the cops went in there. They lived a normal life, we thought. Yeah, right. Teresa, Teresa, get out of here. Only one of the children's son was allowed to leave home to attend a class at a community college, but was always accompanied by his mother. Imagine going to college with your mom, young man. Yeah, sure. The siblings would also get in trouble for things like playing with water while they washed their hands. The kids were doing kid stuff, man, and they were beat for it. Prosecutors said the punishment ranged from being beaten and choked to being shackled to their beds with no access to the bathroom for months at a time. No access to the bathroom for months at a time. So what did the kids do? You can see it in the pictures. They would defecate on the, on the ground. They'd have to take a shit on the carpet or on the hardwood floors. They'd have to piss in there. And then they'd have to live in that. <laughs> but the mother cries and says that she loves her kids. The father says the same stuff. How do you hurt someone that you love? How do you not be a father to the person that you love, to the kids that you say you love? One of the daughters was allegedly the victim of a lewd act by her father, prosecutor said. Real scumbag, right? 25 to life. What do you think he did to the kid? Lewd act? What do you think? The couple's youngest child was the only one of the 13 total who appeared to have not been abused. So one of the kids didn't get, get abused. Was that the one that was special? No, all the kids should be special, right? Despite the horrific torture, authorities said the children endured. Some of them told the courtroom Friday how much they loved their parents and said they did their best to raise them. That's what I'm talking about right there. The parents manipulated these kids. They destroyed them mentally. That's all they knew was their parents. Sometimes, I guess, you have to try to focus on, well, those are my parents and I love them, and not focus on all the nasty shit that they did to them, all the abuse that they endure. Compassion or just not mentally there? I cannot describe in words what we went through growing up, one of the sons said. Sometimes I still have nightmares from things that have happened, but that is the past and this is now. I love my parents and have forgiven them. Forgiveness. Boy, forgiveness isn't always easy, is it? Do you think you could forgive your parents if they did these things to you? Just want to know. I'm just asking. During a news conference at the sentencing, Jack Osborne, who represents seven of the adult children, said that his clients are working very hard toward forgiveness and said it was a miracle that they are thriving. Our clients are most of all survivors. They are not victims. I like that. I like that. They're not victims. They're survivors. That's right. They're survivors. And they're pushing forward. After living in that house of horrors for so many years, these kids are pushing forward. They're trying to do the right thing. They're pursuing their lives. And yet they have compassion for the people that destroyed them mentally, emotionally, physically. That's why we got to get it together. That's why we got to be parents. That's why you got to be a real father. If you're watching this video and you're a father, that's why tonight you're supposed to go in there and, again, tell your son, hey, just want you to know that I love you. That stuff goes a long way. It means something. Tomorrow or Monday when your son comes home with his homework, ask him about it. Sit down and help him. Some parents might not know how to help him. I'm sure there's some math that I'm not going to be able to do when my two boys get older. I'm going to be a little outdated. But just listen to them. Go over it. Read it with them. Help them figure it out. I guess you could Google it, YouTube it. Just be involved, man. This weekend, watch a football game with your son. This weekend, mom, make some cookies with your daughter. Just let her know that you love her. Let her know that you care about her. Those are the important things. Imagine, I don't even know what to think. When I, when I, just, I can't even imagine what it was like living in a house like that for numerous years. The people that are supposed to protect you are the people that harmed you, yet you still forgive. I know we're outside the realms, but you know, these parents went to prison. They're in prison, 25 years to life. I wanna know what you think. Do you think they deserve 25 years to life? Google it, read the article. There's an interview tonight, I think by Diane Sawyer. Check it out. 
Tell me what you think. Blood on the razor wire. With respect, until tomorrow, we're out. Thank you.